from a secret location in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. I just uh, go with the flow. I go with the goddamn flow. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio with wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass off the phone. Just call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Let's say hello to Lisette on the Tom Likas show. Hello? Yes. Hey, Tom. How are you? Great. That's good. Um, I was calling because I was on my way home from work, and I heard Veronica on the phone, and she had a really big problem with older men either trying to sleep with or date younger women. And I don't get why she had such a problem with it. It's one thing to say you're not going to do it yourself, but to say it's just wrong and all that stuff didn't make sense to me. When I was 16, I dated a guy who was 24, about to graduate college, and I was about to graduate high school for, actually, we just broke up the last time about four months ago. (laughs) So we've been going on and off for that long, and uh, I'm 21 now, so it's been four or five years, and there's been lots of guys in between that that were also much, much older than I am, and I really don't have an issue with it. I mean... What's the oldest you've gone? When I had just turned 18, I was dating a model who was actually um, on TV not that long ago, and he was 30. How was it? It was great. I mean, until this most recent guy that I'm with. He's probably one of the best that I've ever been with. Look at that. So I have absolutely no regrets with any of the guys that I've, well, most of the guys that I've been with. Um, And I'll bet most of the guys you have regrets about are your age. I don't date guys my age. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. I never have. If you ever did. So you never even tried it once. I dated one guy who was a little less than a year older than me. And we had problems nonstop, and I got sick and tired of it and wound up cheating on him with another guy that was older than him. <laughs> so um, that, was, that was probably my shortest relationship. But, yeah, no, I, um, I, I really don't get why women are so upset when there's an older guy that looks down at one of the younger girls and is actually interested because from my Why point, wouldn't they be remember, interested? I I don't know, but from my point of view, when I was looking at it, I'm going, damn, that must be a really good compliment. You know, these, especially the one that was a model, I'm sitting there thinking, this guy could go out and get anyone, and yet he chose to try to take me home. So I was always pretty happy with it. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting excited just talking about it. Oh, I'm packing up some stuff for a weekend trip. Bailey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where are you going? Boyfriend's house. <laughs> You're packing for your weekend at the boyfriend's house. Yes. You won't be coming up for air very often, I guess. <laughs> um, usually don't. How much packing do you need to do? Um, just in case someone decides to stop in, I would like to have a different change of clothes for at least each day. I understand. <laughs> All right, listen, thank you so much. All right, thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Joshua on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Doing okay. 
so uh, I guess I'll go ahead and get right to it. Uh, I don't think a lot of people understand or have been paying attention to the uh, political uh, uh, candidates going on. Uh, the first problem I have is with Hillary. First thing, she's a woman. Uh, second thing, when I'm former military, so uh, one of the most important things to me is defense of the country. And uh, when you look at the Middle East and you want to bring peace to it, they don't respect their own women, so they're sure as hell not going to respect her. Uh, the second well, thing keep, keep in mind, many important countries have had women um, at the helm, including England, India, Israel. Nobody's going to say that uh, Israel wasn't respected when Golda Meir was the prime minister. Well, uh, I mean, that's just how I feel. I just don't think, you know, because I've been there and I know how it is. You might recall and, uh, that Israel won the seven-day war with Golda Meir. I mean, that's just like Germany. Uh, their prime minister, she's not, I mean... <laughs> Look at Germany right now. Yeah, anybody attacking Germany? <laughs> What's that? Anybody attacking Germany? By the way, I wouldn't mind having Germany's economy right now. Uh, well, I guess it boils down to I just I just don't think that she'll be able to uh, make that big of a difference between her and Bush or whoever decides to be the president. They're, I mean, they're just going to brush it off. You know, it doesn't matter if she's the president or whatever country. When well, you know, one way, well, I'll put it this way: one way it would matter if a Democrat was in over a Republican like John McCain would be. Uh, at some point, the war in Iraq will finally end. Uh -huh. And well, the war in Iraq, I don't care what military uh, branch you were in. Uh, you can't tell me the war in Iraq is accomplishing anything except making us bankrupt. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. All right. Anyway, I'm just going to pretend you didn't say that and keep moving on because uh, obviously you're ignorant. No, because oh no, no, I'm not. I'm not you ignorant. You have no. You have no defense for the war in Iraq. You have no. You have no defense for it. Hussein Obama. I mean, that sounds pretty Muslim to me. Well, you have two fathers. Well, well his father was from Africa. Uh, I mean, uh, his father, Barack Obama's father was from Africa. Yeah, his stepfather was from Africa. You know, for all the people who say they're African-American, here's a guy whose father was from Africa, and he was given a name like you might have if you were living in Africa, and I can't believe an African-American is calling in here and attacking Barack Obama for having an African name. Barack was born in Hawaii. It doesn't matter. His father is from his father is from Africa. His what? His father. I'm telling you. His father. I, all right, I'm done. I, I that that is mind boggling. Here's a black guy. Black people many times refer to themselves as African American. Now you might not want to vote for Barack Obama. Okay, but to attack Barack Obama for his name for, for all the posers who call themselves African American who've never been been within spitting distance of Africa. Barack Obama's father is from Africa and gives him an African-sounding name, like an actual African name. And here's a black man calling up and attacking Barack Obama because of his name. I mean, would you be more comfortable with the guy if his name was uh, Sean Kemp? Huh? Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Unbelievable. Henry on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Henry. You, uh, you mentioned me on Tuesday about how you changed my life on the email. Uh, I called on the rerun. I never called the original. You're the, actually... you're the guy who's going to Columbia University in New York, right? C correct. I'm the guy who's going to Columbia University in New York. And then prior before I went to Columbia, right, like when I was in high school, I had bad grades. I had to beat my parents before. I, I mean, the report cards come home to the mailbox. And then, and then like, I, I have, I'm not good with girls. I remember I was trying to be nice to girls. I bought her. I remember one girl I was trying to date in high school, a sophomore, Vivian. I bought her a pen, and she just ignored me completely after that. And then I, after I graduated, I didn't, I would just try to get jobs like paying about a little bit higher than minimum wage. And I didn't go anywhere. And then I remember one of my friends, his name is also Tom. He told me to listen to 97.1, your show, but I never really paid much attention to it until one day I got stuck on traffic. I'm actually, I grew up in LA. Uh -huh. And then I just decided to um, give it a shot since my car doesn't even have CD. So. And then, like, I just remember hearing you say your girlfriend's weight and your income is inversely proportional. That's and right. Just, and ever since then, man, it's just become my motivation force to get me to go back to school because I always had bad grades. I thought straight A's possible in my dictionary. 
And ever since then, I got straight A's in community college. I, I applied for Columbia University. I got accepted. And I'm, the girls I'm dating are their height in between 5'3 to 5'6, weigh 100 pounds to 120 pounds. So you see, what I told you was true. Definitely true, man. I have not been anybody over 120 pounds. And also one thing I got to, I got to mention, man, to, also to the listeners. You know, there are times you think that you, you, you meet the exceptions of the rule. I, I did give one girl a chance, like, you know, try to treat her nicely than, than usual. And then she ended up not talking to me. And then I just decided to ignore her phone calls from that point on. And then she, she started, came back, uh, she came back to me. And then, what, and, and then she started, and then when she started gaining weight, and I told her, I didn't sign up for this. Cause when I met you, you were 100 pounds, 5'3", and you're going to stick with it like that. And she, start, and she went out to run the next day. I love that. Yep. And then now I'm graduating in May 2008, and I got an offer from Three Chip Bank Group as an investment banking firm. And then a starting salary is 60 grand with bonuses up to 70 to 80 grand. Well, which this year Morgan Stanley, even though on a bad market, they still pay their investment uh, banking analysts 80 grand bonus on top of 60 grand salary. So Look I'm at that. 130 grand salary for first year, and I'm only 26. So Henry, you're calling in now from the campus of Columbia University. Is that where you are? Actually, I, I am in my dorm room right now, calling from campus in Columbia University. And you're telling me that you got this job all because you happened to tune into the Tom Likas show? Yeah, it all happened because I tuned into the Tom Likas show. Because seriously, I never thought I would make it this far, man. I mean, I, I, seriously, I thought I was not meant for school. I, I always skipped bad grades. I mean, I almost didn't graduate from high school because I almost failed my uh, high school uh, government class. Got a D, I barely passed because, you know, if you fail that class, you have to retake it. I want to point something else out here, Henry, and I think it's important for many of our listeners. Henry, uh, where's your family from? My family is actually from uh, Taiwan. Actually, in, in the Chinese family, they were, uh, they actually, my parents actually gave up on me because the Asian families do have, uh, their kids usually have good grades, but I probably was an exception. You know, I've heard from so many Asian guys who tell me that, that American women think they're geeky and they can't get a date, but look at you. You're knocking them down one after another. Yep, it's all because, uh, you know, if, you know. Actually, there's also the downside because, like, even their parents like me, so they usually try to bring me back to their parents, which that's not something I want to do. Cause I remember there's one girl that said that I want me to go on a trip with her parents to Seattle, and I didn't go because, like, I don't want to get involved into that. Yeah, because you probably heard me tell you, don't meet the parents, don't meet the family, don't meet the friends. Exactly. I have no kids, and I don't plan on having any kids. Look at you. And I do have a godson with my friend's friend, and I'm making sure that he's listening to you when he, uh, when he grows up. Because I wish I have, I have access to you when I was younger. But I wouldn't have made that stupid mistakes. And I would have never bought that gift, which cost me $100 in 10th grade. And I, I still remember it because it was a lot for me at that time. I am so proud of you. You are really one of my top students, Henry. I'm, I, I, can't, I can't tell you how proud I am. And Tom, can you take me out old school? You know I can. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. A fat girl's kind of like a scooter, okay? It, it, they're fun to drive until somebody catches you. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones at 1-800-5800-TOM. Melissa. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello? Yes. Hi, how are you? Hi. Good. Um, the comment I wanted to make is that Barack just needs to throw in the towel because it will never be the black house. It will always be the white house. I don't, you know what, I don't think that's necessarily true because there were black people who I think could have won over the last few years. Colin Powell, for example, I think Colin Powell could have won had he run. I really don't think so because the majority is Latinos. And well, the majority in the United States is not Latinos. The majority uh, in Los Angeles County is Latinos, but not not in the United States. I think in California. Yeah, but there's 50 states that vote for presidents, not just California. Exactly, but is, is he winning? Is what? Is he winning? He's not running. Colin no, Powell? Barack, Barack. I'm talking about Barack. 
We don't know if he's going to win yet. It's very close between him and Hillary Clinton. We don't know yet. Hillary Clinton is going to take it because it's New Millennium, and she's a female. So I really think... Because it's New a- Millennium, and she's a female. I, another person, another black person I think could have won, although not this year, but maybe four years ago, if, if they needed a candidate, is Condoleezza Rice. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I've always believed the first black president will be a Republican. Oh, no. No, I don't think so. Why not? Because. Because why? Because. I mean, come on now. You think the the white man's going to want a black man in running the country? If he's a Republican? No, I don't think so. Oh, yeah. Yes, he's just, he's just whitewashed. Then. So you wouldn't consider a black Republican to be black? No. So you think they call him Paul is white? Like you said, like you said, like um, he said. I mean, that he's gonna put what um, insurance on everybody, health insurance. You think they're gonna let him do that? Hillary Clinton said the same thing. But she's a female. So they would let her put insurance on everybody, but they wouldn't let Barack Obama do it. No. Okay, this has been stimulating. It's Chicks on Politics. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. Hey. Having a good day so far? So far, so good. Hey, I'm calling. uh, You discussed during the week about our hate for New Yorkers, and I want to add my hate for New Yorkers because... uh, Back during 9-11, I know some people over there in New York, and many times they would address and tell me that, oh, man, this horrible, the attack on New York. I go, what are you talking about? Attack on New York. It was an attack on the U.S. No, but they went after here, after New York, and I'm like, what are you, do you believe they were planning to blow, you know, blow you guys personally up? You New Yorkers are just too damn important. I go, it's against the U.S., not against you guys, and so many times that just... You're talking about 9-11. Well, of course, uh, New Yorkers have conveniently forgotten that the Pentagon um, was attacked uh, uh, about Flight 93. They forgot about that. It's all about the, uh, the the New York part of it, and the rest is pretty much forgotten. Yes, we have to remember them for every, And, that, you know, it was a horrible tragedy that happened, but just the way they put it, and then at the same time, they would tell me when I went over there to visit, like, a couple years ago, they would bring back attacks on New York, this, and I'm like, even on the news, and I'm like, oh, come on now, even you guys as a journalist, you journalists are ah, just insane over there, and at some point, I've just forgotten, unfortunately, like, all of the tragedies, you forget them eventually, but over there, it's against them, and I'm just, I'm just so angry, I just cannot stand New Yorkers, and just to add that, hopefully everyone realizes how arrogant these people are. Well, having just gotten back from there, I can confirm uh, they've been arrogant, and they continue to be arrogant. No doubt about it. Jim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Jim. Hey, Tom. How are you, man? Do you care? Uh, well, just a little bit. i got to say, you're you're entertaining, Tom, but when it comes to politics, I, I have to say you're extremely uh, ignorant of what's going on. Man. Because I don't agree with you. No, 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 no. Because you're no, 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 no. Because I don't agree with you. Okay, I come from the Middle East, all right? And and I think if if you look at ninety five percent of the uh, the suicide bombers and all these people that are killing people over there and here, uh, you got to admit the name the name means something, right? They're not. No, it uh, really it really doesn't. Oh, you don't think they're all Muhammad, Ahmed, and uh, Mustafa? You you don't see that pattern? Uh, the fact is that uh, Barack Obama is not from the Middle East, nor is his father. They're from Africa. His father's from Africa. Okay, Africa has Muslims too. You know that, right? I understand that, but the okay. point I'm the point I'm making to you is there are millions and millions of people with these names, and and very few of them are suicide bombers. I understand. Not not all Muslims are suicide bombers, but most suicide bombers are Muslims. Wouldn't you agree? Um, I don't know. I do know there have been other suicide bombers other than Muslims. Yes, there have been a lot of Muslims, but even then, when you compare the number of suicide bombers to the number of Muslims, it's a very small number of people. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you know what, Tom? Here, here's what I think. Are you telling me there's millions and millions of suicide bombers? Well, they're 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 sure uh, getting ready. No, no. I mean, Are there millions and millions of suicide bombers? Yes I, or no? I wouldn't say no. No, I, I wouldn't. Are say there millions. even a million? 
Uh, you know what, Tom? I don't know. The Probably case. not, right? Probably not. But there are yeah. hundreds of millions of Muslims in the world. Yeah, yeah, and that's because only ten percent. Islam of is the, the Islam. The Islam is like one of the top, if not the top, religions on earth. You know, you know how can so millions and millions of people are going to have names like that. Okay, okay, but but most of the ones that do have that name. Have, that, have that doesn't mean name. anything. I, oh, that doesn't mean a thing. It doesn't, you can't assume that everybody with a certain name, it, just like you can't assume that everybody named Ted is going to be a serial killer. Just because you had the Unabomber, Ted Kaczynski, and, and Ted Bundy, you can't assume anybody named Ted is a threat. I see. Tom, let me ask you this. How come you never make fun of uh, Islam or Muslims or take them out Muhammad style? Or, I, uh, you know? if, if somebody comes up with something clever, we would do it. We would never to say we've never said no to that. Yeah, I have said that I have said that religion is not sacred and uh, -huh. uh, it's a lifestyle choice and that everybody's open to ridicule. So you are really barking up the wrong tree. But you wouldn't be afraid that they're going to come and bomb your station or kill oh, you or something. Please, please. You wouldn't, huh? No. Oh, well, Tom, I guess uh, I guess we're just going to agree to disagree on this, and you'll see one day. What will I see? You, you will see that. Oh, uh, Barack Obama is going to take over the White House and then become a suicide bomber? I'll, I'll tell you what. No, he's not going to be a You're suicide a bomber. But, You're but a you nut. You're a nut. He says he wants change. You're a he will definitely change. Yeah, he's he going to blow up the White House, right? And you know what? He'll, he'll, he'll uh, stop. Sometimes you just have to say stop. Now, in my old incarnation of doing a news-oriented show, that is where we hit the bomb. That is when the bomb was particularly appropriate. But, um, oh boy. <laughs> Everybody whose middle name is Hussein, look out. My God, on, on that basis, he'd be on the no-fly list. No wonder he wants to be president. He could be on Air Force One. He wouldn't have to go through security. Jackie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Um, I just wanted to say that you're the absolute best ever. And because of you, you have actually saved my marriage. Really? Yes. I should, I... I should have applied that technique to my own marriage. <laughs> whatever it was. You know what? I wish that my husband actually listened because, um, you know, how much you have taught me has actually improved his life. Tell me so, how. Um, well, we started dating probably 15 years ago. And after three years of, like, dating and, you know, wanting to get married as, you know, being a female and all that crap, um, his best friend actually told me, to, you know what, I, you need to talk, you need to listen to Tom like it before you do anything else. Just listen. And so I'm just being ignorant woman, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do it because I, I have nothing to lose. So I listened, and um, probably I decided to drop the whole marriage thing because it wasn't a big thing. He really didn't want kids. I decided that wasn't a big thing, and, you know, just to have a good relationship with somebody is the best. So I, you know, I, I wonder, by the way, I often yeah. wonder this because I'm one of the people who hasn't wanted to have kids. I often wonder how many great relationships went by the boards because the woman insisted on having kids. You have a great guy. The sex is good. You have good conversations. You like hanging out together. You like doing things together. But the woman insists on having kids. And the guy says, well, I don't want to have kids. And then she says, well, goodbye. I, I wonder how many times that happens. And I wonder how many times, I wonder how many times those women later on are like, I can't believe it, it was the best relationship I ever had, I don't know why. <laughs> you, know when, you know when this happened? I'm going to tell you, it happened to me. My, yeah. my first wife. Uh. My first wife, I was, you know, and this is where I tell the guys they're stupid because I have experience. I stupidly got married at 18. Uh, I got married to somebody who I got along with great, and we had three great years together. And then suddenly, um, when she saw her aunt unexpectedly have a kid at age 41, she came back to spending a day at her aunt's house going, I want to have a kid. So I'm like, well, we have an agreement. And she said, but I changed my mind. I'm going to stop taking the pill. Oh. And so I said, that's it. Six weeks after sleeping on the sofa later, I just left. Yeah. So... I Literally 15 years later, yeah, 15. I, I get a phone call at my home in Los Angeles. This all happened in New York 15 years before. 
I get a call in Los Angeles. Uh, I just wanted to say that was the worst decision I ever made. It was so stupid. I never got remarried. I never found anyone to have a kid with. I don't have kids. I don't have a husband. I don't have anything. I had you, and I gave you up, and I can't believe. I can't believe it. Of course. You know, oh, hindsight's twenty twenty. which... I wonder how many women have done that and have been... I, yeah, I, I could probably do a whole hour of women calling in and telling me their regrets about dumping guys for that reason and then later on regretting it. Yeah. Oh, I would love to listen to that. Oh. Yeah, because it was the best choice I ever made. I made my relationship more important than anything else. And, you know, we still don't have kids. We don't want kids. I don't want kids now. I see them in their breath. I'm like, ugh. But, uh, you know, I like to hold the babies, but nah. I, we like to go to the river, and, you know, we bought a boat, we bought a house, you know, we work hard, we play hard. And, you know, that's, that's I, I thank you so much for just changing my life, and I really, really just appreciate everything that you do, and I listen to you every day. So, and after all these years, I finally got in. So I just wanted to tell you, you're awesome, buddy. That's what I said to my girlfriend. If I'm blessed enough to meet my soulmate, why would I go and blow it with marriage? It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show at one 800 800 tom have you seen the latest story about Roger Clemens? Ah! This is from the New York Daily News. Brian McNamee, he's the former trainer with the New York Yankees who said he injected Roger Clemens with HDH. Steroids. Well, it says here in the New York Daily News that Brian McNamee told congressional investigators yesterday that Roger Clemens' wife, his wife, took HGH before she appeared with the pitcher in Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition in 2003. They quote a Washington source here. Says here, Debbie Clemens appeared with her husband in a photograph taken in Central Park in the magazine's February 18, 2003 issue, wearing a bikini and holding a bat over her shoulders while Roger Clemens reclined on the ground in his Yankee uniform. Why would you want Roger Clemens in the shot? <laughs> Please. According to the source, quote, McNamee discussed his wife's use before the committee. She was trying to get in shape for the SI cover. He told them the story that Debbie took growth, meaning HGH, human growth hormone. McNamee testified that he ejected her at Roger Clemens' direction, according to the source. All right, but move the needle over there. Just put it right there in her butt. That's good. Right there. Yeah. McNamee was speaking under oath before the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform, which will hold a hearing on the Mitchell Report on steroid use in baseball Wednesday. That's next Wednesday. Clemens' attorneys asked for a reaction to the story, which was first reported on the Daily News website. This is the New York Daily News. Expressed disdain for McNamee's claims. Lanny Brewer, one of Clemens' lawyers, asked, Did Roger get the Cy Young before his wife took the HGH? The HGH. Acting like you've never heard of HGH. Acting like you're Larry King. Oh, and he has not taken the HGH. I like Larry would ever ask a tough question like that. Yeah. Rusty Harden. <laughs> Sounds like the name of a stripper from the 50s. Rusty Harden, another of Clemens' attorneys, said, I'll tell you what, guys, this guy never ceases to amaze me. I think it reveals what he's really all about. First he throws out waste, and then he wants to talk about this. The waste is all the, uh, you know what he did. This was the story from yesterday. Uh, Brian McNamee gathered together all the all these gauze strips and uh, 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 syringes. He took them out of Roger Clemens' garbage can, he says. And he says it proves that Roger Clemens 
uh, was uh, taking steroids at HGH because his blood was on the gauze, and so was the HGH and the uh, steroids. And Roger Clement is trying to say this isn't true. But I love this new wrinkle. His wife was taking HGH now, according to Brian McNamee. Okay. The story's getting better and better. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Afrin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? How you doing? It's a pleasure to meet you, man. It's a pleasure talking to you. And you haven't even met me yet. It's fantastic. (laughs) I just wanted to tell you I enjoy your show. And as far as uh, your views on New York, I really, uh, that doesn't make any sense because you're from New York, man. How can you say these things about New York? I left New York for a variety of reasons. Yeah, but your mentality is New York. No, it isn't. I think it is. How so? I think a lot of New Yorkers out there feel the same way. How so? Your views about women... Is a New York man? Oh, not at all. Are you kidding me? Where in New York, no, no. In the, New no. York, New York men are a bunch of pussies who submit to ball busting bitches. Who, oh, you said the ball busting. Ball busting bitches. That's right. New York is the home of the ball busting bitch. Well, it is a bunch of. And I have, by the way, I've spent enough time in New York to know that this is the biggest, most pussy whipped group I've ever seen. <laughs> men in New York and their ball busting bitches. I understand, I understand that totally. So you so you agree with that, right? I don't uh, I, no, I don't agree with that. Well, agree uh, with if, if if men in New York agree with my point of view on women, they would dump those ball busting bitches. Well, out here is a bunch of fake bitches. Am I right? I know. Uh, out but, here, where are you from? Are you from New York? Too much makeup. Too much makeup in New York. It's much. Oh, please. Oh, don't tell me you had too much makeup. I just came back from New York, dude. I'm telling you what I saw when I was in New York is women with the big poofy hair, the can of Aquanet in their purse, and they walk around with the fake nails and popping gum. And Oh, oh, come on. You're not going to tell me these are hot chicks. Please. Oh, oh, the Puerto Ricans out there are beautiful, man. Tell me I'm lying. Um, all the, all the, the most beautiful women are. New York are, women are fat. They have big mouths. They can't shut their traps. I'm not, be, be perfectly honest, I'm not saying that there's not no beautiful women out here. I mean, yeah, yeah, it, it gives you an idea of how ugly women in New York are that people think Sarah Jessica Parker is hot. Oh, people I, in New York. She's a horse. She's a horse. I, yeah, but come on. Honest with you. All these women in New York watch Sex and the City. Oh, they're so beautiful. They're so beautiful. That's that's the standard of beauty. 50-something-year-old Kim Cattrall. Yeah. Hot. So but, hot. But you don't like New York at all? You even being from New York? I'm, uh, I'm not saying there's nothing to like about New York, but I, I look yeah. at New York like Las Vegas. It's a place where I go in for about 48 hours and have some real fun, and then after that, it's time to go home. <laughs> If you think I want to get on the IRT with Vinny and Sal and and we're in their giant uniforms and walking around going, the giant, if if, if you think that's the way I want to live my life, guess again. Well, I've met hundreds of people out in here in L.A. and most of them are infatuated with New York. uh, Oh, that is not that is not even close to true. You you have no idea. They're just being polite to you. Is, no, you, the the real truth about L.A. is that nobody cares that you're from New York. Well, I understand. Nobody's that. impressed. On most of the people I've met, maybe no. they might be losers. No. In my opinion, but. Oh, they, yeah, the, they're all losers, but you're from New York. You're a big winner, right? Why are you here, by the way, if, if everybody here is such a loser? This is my home. This is my home, Tom, but New York is my home home. That's What, what does that mean? Live. Go home. I'll tell you what. I'll buy you a ticket today. Of course, I will take your California driver's license in exchange, and I will cut it in half, huh? <laughs> well, I'm in the- I will drive you. I will, per- Efren, I'm, I'm making you this offer. Tonight, when I get off the air, I will drive you to the airport and buy you a ticket to New York, but it's a one-way ticket, and I take your California driver's license in exchange. <laughs> I will give you your dream. You can go back to your home home, and you can stay there with your homies. Um, I just got to say one thing. New York Knicks will be in the championship. Oh, stop. Oh, now now we know That's how right. delusional you are. Hey, the, the, New York, Yorker, the New I'm York New Knicks, York. The, do you know Do you know when the New York Knicks last won a championship? In 72. Before you were born, son. 
I understand. So what I'm What in the I'm world the makes you man. think that that lousy piece of crap team is going to be a champion of anything? Patrick Ewing is the best. They are not even going to be in the playoffs. In fact, they're not going to be in the playoffs for the next three years. Forget it. Tom, we'll be on the, we'll be on this phone forever, man. I just want to tell you, I, I really love your show. No, but don't get uh, – please. The New York Knicks, are, are you delusional or are you just trying to be an annoying New Yorker? Which is it? Uh, I'm not delusional. We got a lot of talent. And as really? Well as everybody... who, who, name, name the talent. Let's hear. Uh, okay, Jamal Crawford. He might be a little soft, but he has a lot of talent. <laughs> Maybe he's a little soft, yeah. Who else? He's a little one-dimensional, but he's, he's got a lot of talent. Once right. he, he could be one of the best uh, post players in the league. Could but be, but isn't. Talent. Yeah. Uh, Who else? Uh, okay, Eddie Curry. Okay, you got – well, Steph is a cancer. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, he's only the biggest star on the team, and he's a cancer, <laughs> right? Okay, but you have – Speaking of soft, let's talk about the coach. Well, he, he's the big man in the office when he's sexually well, harassing the other employees. But other well, than he, that, he messed, he messed the CBA up too. I, 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 yeah, he messed the CBA up too. And the coach of your team, I, you know what? He ought to be as much of a man on the court as he is in the office when he's going around using the F word and <laughs> sexually harassing never, everybody in the office. But Tom, Tommy, I never. I should I say pop because I listen to you and I respect your words a lot. As well, you but, should. Uh, but in, re in, in, in re reality, Laker fans, if you go to those games, all the Let me explain something to you, okay? I was at a New York Ranger game at Madison Square Garden Tuesday yeah. night, so my information is very, very fresh, okay? I understand. Oh, uh, I, I haven't been there in a year, over Fine. a year. Fine. So. Well, let me, let me update you, okay? Because New Yorkers love to say how the L.A. fans are not fans and how they all go home early and they, they get there late, blah, blah, blah. When the New York Rangers fell behind the Los Angeles Kings, not by seven goals or six goals or five goals, by two goals, yeah. people were leaving en masse with more than 12 minutes to go in the game. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, the place was deserted. The place was <laughs> deserted, dude. You hearing me? I hear you. It was deserted. And I, I was turning you. around as the Kings fan going, hey, where are you all going? Well, let me put it. Where are you going? This is New York. Where are y'all going? Hey Tom, one one thing before I get off because I want. I, I didn't think I didn't hear your explanation for why everybody was leaving. I don't know. I could only explain for myself. Yeah. So you, you think know? New York fans are better than the LA fans? I'll tell you what about the LA fans. Most of them are still there with a minute left in the game. <laughs> New York fans are front runners. Yeah, New York fans are front runners, and the minute the uh, New York Rangers fall behind by two goals, everybody leaves. Hey Tom, most of them are there if they're winning. But when it comes well, to my well, again, Knicks, if it comes to my Knicks and uh, we're your down Knicks, <laughs> your Knicks. Why? Well, uh, clearly, you have to be a big fan to be a Knicks fan. I am because they stink and they have stunk for years, and they continue to stink. Well, we, we 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 messed up the '94, we messed up '98, but we'll be back. No, no, yet. you've you haven't won a championship since before you were born. You have never seen the New York Knicks win a championship. You're right. Yeah, Ever. You're right. Never. You never I, have. I'm all, I get to talk to you. Do you know? Do you? By the way, do you know who played on the New York Knicks the last time they won a chat? This is how long it's been. Oh, don't don't up. Uh, oh, don't tell me. Uh, uh, Walt Clive Frazier, Earl the Pearl Monroe, uh -huh. Dave DeBusher, uh -huh. Bill Bradley. Uh huh. Who else? Uh, don't get. Uh, oh, no, I, don't tell me. Uh, 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 Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson. Yes. <laughs> Phil Jackson was a player the last time they won. That's that's how long it's been. That was uh, that was two hip replacements and heart surgery later. He's th that's how long it's been. <laughs> but I just I love the Knicks, man. I'll never change that. So well, but, that, but look, you can love them all you just want, like to, but LA people LA love LA the LA Cubs. LA. Nobody actually thinks they're going to win the World Series. Don't be deluded into thinking the Knicks are going to be in the playoffs, much less be the champions of anything. But well, when it when it does happen, I'll see heaven, baby. You'll be in heaven. That's what it's going to happen. <laughs> you're right, and it's going to happen. You're gonna, no, 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 it's going to happen after you're dead. That's what it's going to happen. I'll be there with bells on with a hot bitch standing next to me. Oh, that's great. All right. Another delusional individual from the East Coast. Our email address, write to me right now. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.